Hello everyone. I'm going to be doing an installation on my rear axle for my Toyota pickup. I'm installing a quick lunchbox locker. This one is Spartan. It's a Spartan locker. I'm not going to show you guys the full process, but give you guys a quick walk down and run down. Basically, we got to remove the e-brake line, remove the four nuts that holds the wheels, the axles, and then uh, loosen up the hard line for the brake line. I already drained the oil. Make sure you drain the gear oil. And then we'll go ahead and remove the dry line. And then we'll go ahead and unbolt the differential. And then once we get to that part, I'll go ahead and start showing you guys the rest of the installation of the Spartan Locker. But for the part where we do all the removal of this stuff, you guys should pretty much know how to do already. So I'm not going to film any of that stuff. So let's get moving. Here's the locker that I got for the truck. It's a Spartan locker, part number SL TV6-30. I didn't know, but when I ordered this locker, this locker is supposed to be used with your stock side gears. So they have different versions. The one that used the stock side gears, and then there's other lockers made by like LockRite and some other companies where they actually provide the actual new side gears and the uh the main pinion the main uh dowel pin or whatever that's called the center pin so this one is to be used with your side gear and i'll go ahead and just install it it's only 216 bucks um, from amazon so it came with just these piece right here this is the spacer that goes in here and then these are all the uh the metal pins and the springs and then comes with the instructions so the instruction is very important we'll go ahead and get more into this once i get the differential out but something to keep in mind is that some of these spartan locker some of them require you to use the original spacer so this is the side gear they call it the thrush washer some of them use that spacer and then this one here does not use it. So make sure you read your instruction book. So you can see right here, it says that note about the thrust washer. This Spartan locker does not use the side gear thrust washer. So for this case here, we won't be installing the thrust washer, which is this piece right here. Once I get the differential out, we'll go ahead and get a full view of everything and go from there. First and foremost, this is also my first time doing an installation on a locker. I've done a differential. Um, I had differential before and I just removed them just to tear them apart, but I never had the chance to put them back together with the locker. So this is somewhat new to me, but I am somewhat familiar with the process and the how the differential works. So I'm going to go ahead and take my time doing this and I will do my best to go ahead and document this installation. So maybe you guys can learn something or maybe you guys can help me along the way. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let's go. Today's the next day. We got the axles out. We're doing the lunchbox install. I originally was going to do the uh, the bearings. And then I decided that if the bearings are good, we're just going to go ahead and skip it. But then I took out the axle. And guess what? You can barely see it. You can barely see it. But there is a little bit of play. And I don't like that. I don't like that. These are good bearings. These are the Nachi bearings, Japan. But I don't have a record of when these were last replaced. Maybe these are the original one. Who knows? The seal looks really good. But I have the whole kit. I have the whole kit where it comes with the bearings, um, the seals, the dust seal over here, and this little rubber seal right here. So I'm going to go ahead and take my axle all the way up to Wasilla and uh, take it to Scott. Scott Hunt does fabrication, does work. He's the guy who did uh, the solid axle swap for Black Yoda. So he has the bearing press. I don't want to deal with any press because I know how hard it is. So I'm just going to take it to him. So we're going to go ahead and take the axle to him. Let him change out the bearings. And then we'll come back and take out the diff and go and do the lockers. So this is going to be a full day project. I kind of expected this. So it is what it is. And again, it's good to put new bearings while we're here. So why not? So I'll get back to you guys once we get the axles and bearings done. And then we'll go into the next step. In order to check the bearing play, you must take out the axle and then you can go ahead and mess with it. If there's any slight play, most likely you'll have to replace the bearings. Here's how the old one looked like and here's how the new one looked like, freshly installed, made from Japan. Brand new rubber o-ring and brand new seal. I put the zip tie right here so I know that this is the passenger side. And then I put another zip tie on the passenger side axle so i don't mix them up but once i'm done i'll go ahead and remove this 
driver's size completed nice and beautiful and these are all japan high quality seals so good quality seals and good quality well bearing we're gonna go ahead and remove the differential now and we'll get to the fun part i got the rear differential out and we're gonna do some labeling <laughs> so i'm gonna refer this to the front left right and usually people like to put some punches in there but i'm not gonna do that i put this for left left goes here left cap left cap <coughs> right cap right cap and then over here i have the same thing left the bolts the bolts the front and we're just gonna make sure we place them where they go and make sure that they go exactly where they go <coughs> and then when i remove this cap here i'm gonna remove this as one piece and we're gonna go ahead and put the vise so that we don't have to set the backlash again all right so let's go ahead and get into it man really fun super good i checked all the teeth all the teeth are still in great condition this is a stock 456 toyota they were using a really thin paper gasket and actually seemed to held up really good i mean i never had any differential leak but they're using just a super thin gasket paper but i'm gonna go ahead and use black rtv when i were at home we uh, when we get this back installed carry out so this is it right here all the bearings look good this is normal wear and tear so we're gonna remove these bolts right here these bolts and then what that's gonna do is that's gonna open up this cap right here and then we'll be able to access the spider gear so this is a four pin and then here i have everything labeled so this is the left side this is the race for the left side left side top boat bottom boat vice versa this is the left and this is the right so this is what i have i have a vice grip like this so they stay in their same position and then when it's time to install i'm just going to slide it back in this is one of the tip i learned on the youtube videos so hopefully this works and i don't have to mess with the backlash because when you're adjusting backlash this is what you have to mess with you have to mess with these guys here so we're going to go ahead and dig in guys we're going to go ahead and dig into this piece here and then i'll crack the uh let me crack the spider gear open and show you guys what's in there everything looks really good i did another inspection all the teeth looks really great this is a four five six again so everything looks good here and then the main the main pinion in here everything looks good in here we're gonna keep it oily and stuff like that but man everything looks good man looks really really great we took off those bolts and now the carrier is off so we just flip it around so carry off <laughs> so this locker here we will be using the existing gear so this gear right here we will be using but then these little spider gear we're throwing these away so these guys just pop off right there we'll throw those away and also it comes with thrush washer this right here goes like that we do not use this washer here according to the instruction we don't use this one so we're gonna go ahead and put that away in our box and just save it and then over here i have the bolts so this is my first bolt i marked it white and then just from left um left to right just make sure they're the same it doesn't really matter i'm pretty sure but just for the heck of it so we're gonna go ahead and set this aside so basically what it does is this right here we'll be riding right here that's kind of how it's gonna look so it's gonna look like it's gonna look like that once we remove the uh spider gears these are the small spider gears and this is the big side gear so this is what it looks like so like that and like that something like that okay guys so i removed the cross pin i removed the small spider gears these you don't need no more and then i removed this gear down here this gear right here i took that off and then we went ahead and removed the washer this is a thrush washer we don't use this no more so we're just gonna keep this for spare in case if one day we do want to remove the locker we can go ahead and install this back in it's very simple you just install the locker it doesn't matter one side of the locker right here there's a spacer it doesn't matter which side it goes in the cross pin goes like this like that so it's lined up and then we have to install those uh the springs and there's a spring hole right here there's two right here and then two on the other side springs are really simple one size close springs just goes in like that it goes in like that and then goes into the hole just like that so you see that it just goes in sit like that same thing for the other one we're gonna go do the other side so we take the other locker and we got to install the springs again there's two hole and they're uh they're vice versa so they go like um yeah, they go like that yeah so the spring this so this spring right here lines up right here and the spring for this one will go on to the other one vice versa so just like that and 
you want to make sure that everything's lined up properly. Lined up's nice and good. Yep. Everything's nicely lined up. Perfect. Once that's in, this piece will go on like that. And again, you have to make sure you remove the thrust washer. This one doesn't require a thrust washer. Just make sure it's nice and clean. So that goes on like that. And then this piece here, the carrier, just goes right over it. <coughs> oh, I forgot something. Oh, I totally forgot something. I almost forgot the freaking washer. The rest of the other washer. So this other washer goes like that. So don't forget that for sure. So it should go like that. So it should be like that. And then this piece just goes right over here. Boom, everything fits nice there. Holy smoke. So since this is my first time, <coughs> I'm just gonna do a double check. Make sure it's nice and smooth. Springs are in there, engage. Okay, everything looks good, man. Super easy. It's super loose right now, but once we tighten it up, it'll be stronger. Okay, then we're gonna put this cap on. Put this cap on, and what you want to do is you want to hold it, and you have to flip it the other side because we have to put the bolts in. So we're going to go like that, just like that. And now we'll go ahead and put the bolts in. I marked my placement already, so we'll have the top bolt. And with this right here, we'll go ahead and do a crisscross pattern, just like if you're doing a tire insulation or something like that. So, man, this looks pretty good. Everything looks fine, man. One, two, three, seven, eight, eight bolts. I don't have the torque specs on these, so we're just gonna go ahead and get them a little nice snug in there and go from there. So let me get these guys bolted up. You also wanna go ahead and just hand thread them first, just to make sure you don't strip them or anything like that. Perfect. All right, so we'll go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten up in a bit here, but we wanna go ahead and check it out. Man, that's what it looks like right here. So that's pretty much it for the locker and then everything is in the reverse order, but I wanna take a quick look, man. Okay, this locker is in, it's in lock mode right now. Damn, this is gonna be interesting. I'm excited. <coughs> I'm super excited for this. These side gears are no longer in use. I'm gonna hold on to these in case if I ever wanna go back and have an open diff. So it's always good to just keep these for spares or for a backup. What you can do is you can just put those gears into your box that came with your locker. All right, so we have the gear assembly set up. This is all set up. It's time to go ahead and install it back in. So we wanna be very careful, make sure we get the race bearings on and it should be a really good fun install. So make sure you keep the race bearing to whichever position they stay on. So this is the left, this is the right. It'd be easier if I had a stand for my differential here, but I don't have a stand or anything. There we go. You guys saw how easy that slide in, that slid in? So if we, the way we do it this way here, if we don't have to set the backlash. So I'm gonna go and grab the other bolts. Oh, I should have brought all my bolts over here. Ugh. Hello? Hey, you at home? Yeah, what's up? I'm gonna stop by your house. Yeah, I'm still doing my locker, my diff. Yeah, that's fine. I'm gonna stop by your house. Come into my shed. Bye. Bye bye. Black Eric is trying to make me go uh, off roading. I'm not even finished yet. Dude's crazy, man. Maybe Eric will get here in time and he'll come help me real quick. They want to go do some off roading, so I just don't have the time yet. I'm still working on my thing here. We're just gonna hand tight everything right now. Hand tight and then we'll go ahead and get the uh, torque specs out here. So for the right side, same concept. You guys gonna look and see how I slide it right in. It should slide in really easy, no force at all. Here it is, we have the differential complete and you can see what the method that we did here holding the, holding the bearing caps, everything lined back up, left, 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 and then right, right, right. So everything looks really good. We're gonna go ahead and put some black RTV. I'm gonna be using 90 minute or black RTV and then we'll get this installed and then bleed the brake system and go from there. Here's our finished product of the installation. I didn't film the rest of it because it's pretty much a reverse order. I went ahead and installed the axles. 
I didn't change the brake pads or the brake drum pads because they're still in good condition. I was going to change them, but then when I took the axle out, I inspected it. It was still really clean or really good. So I kept the brake pad the way it is. I did go ahead and clean the inside drum. So I went ahead and bleed the brake system. If you guys don't know how to bleed the brake system, you can do a quick um, DIY one where you just use a plastic bottle, a tubing, and then it could be a one-man um, job to bleed the system. Really easy. I'll show a photo of it. So while I was doing that, I, I let it the RTV cure for about 90 minutes and then added oil. Go ahead and add 80, 90 oil, whatever you want to use. And that's pretty much it. I did a quick test drive and man, it feels really uh, nice. I did like a quick just around the block so I haven't hit the highway yet but I'm gonna let it care for another two hours and then after that we'll go for a quick test drive on the city pavement and then maybe next week we'll go and take it out for an off-road trip. The other thing I found out was that one of my U-joints here for my rear drive line it's kind of going bad it's not the smoothest it's still good right now so I went ahead and just grease it but I think next week I'm gonna go ahead and buy a new U-joints and get that replaced. If you guys got any recommendation let me know in the comments. But that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you guys next time.